Peace be with you. Wherever you are this morning, we give thanks that God has gathered us here so that we may now turn our hearts to worship. In this hour to come, may you know God's love and feel God's presence. And in the midst of all of the uncertainty of the world, may we know Christ's amazing grace sustains us.
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If you must cross in God to my view, with gentle hand through all your ways, you'll find that God is there beside you.
Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Welcome to Augsburg. Wherever life finds you this day, we pray for peace, that God is with you in our time apart. And if you're visiting with us this morning, a special welcome to you. And please let us know how we can walk with you on your faith journey. While we are physically apart as community, we're making every effort to stay together. And so we'll continue our Tuesday Bible studies each Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. As we continue to study Romans, we'll offer a 1-800 number to call in and participate together. We'll send that number out by flock note tomorrow afternoon. But if you don't receive flock notes or need more information, please call the office. Also this week, we'll be launching a new Bible study for our youth to be with them in their time apart from friends and life in school. As we are a part of a reminder that your pastors are always available, and please don't hesitate to call, to text, or to shoot us an email, and we'll reply as quickly as possible so that you might know God's love in our time apart. And we encourage you to continue to remember those who are isolated or alone in these times, to call them, to reach out to them, and to share God's love so that community might abound no matter what we experience in the world around us. Our service continues now as we hear God's word. A reading from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him, for the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, there remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible. For everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. 
We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to the one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone who opened the eyes of a person being born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir? Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sinned. But now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Over two decades ago, when I sat in my high school German class, I remember that our teacher, who we called Frau affectionately, would, at the end of teaching a concept, look around the classroom and say, All is klar? Is it clear to you? Does it make sense? And as she would look at us one by one, we were often encouraged to respond in liquid form. If we said Wasser, water, yes, it was clear, we understood it. If it was Sprite, well, maybe there were some bubbles fizzing up, but as for the most part, we understood the concept taught that day. But if you really weren't sure, as often my answer and reply would be, you would often reply, clear as mud. To this day, I still can't conjugate the verb sign. Clear as mud was an indication to Frau that we just weren't getting it, that even though the concept was being taught, it just wasn't coming into fullness, it wasn't making any sense, and it allowed her to see where we might be tripping up and learning the nuances of a foreign language. Clear as mud means that even though we know that there is something on the other side, that it is hard to get a sense of what it is. That it is hard to know what's really being taught. We live in times that are clear as mud, where we find ourselves uncertain about so much. And yet in the midst of all of that, we continue to turn back again to the one who makes things clear, the one who is the light of the world, Jesus, to remind us of what we need to know when everything else seems to be falling apart. And the gift of this assigned gospel text on this day is a beautiful reminder of what God can do even when things seem as clear as mud. In this gospel text, so long in length from the ninth chapter, that it itself could be a sermon, we encounter the story of Jesus encountering a blind man from birth, a beggar, one who has known nothing else. And in the midst of all of that, Jesus is right there with him and does something beyond expectation. He spits and creates mud in the ground, wiping it on the man's face and going and telling him to wash off. That's part one of the story. Part two, much longer in length, is this long dialogue between the man and others, the Pharisees, those who were uncertain, his own parents who even didn't know. And for verse upon verse, there are all sorts of questions that can't be answered back and forth, passing the buck, pushing the envelope, trying to make sense of something, 
And at the end of all of that, when nothing is clear at all, the blind man's community sends him away. And then there, in the final words of this text, in the final verses, Jesus once again is back on the scene. When Jesus proclaims to this man that he indeed has sight and he has seen the one who is God and that God is present with him. And he issues a harsh rebuttal for the Pharisees who think they have it all as clear as they can when they wonder if they themselves are the ones who are blind. This three-part story of the blind man encountering Jesus and then Jesus, for the longest time, being absent from this gospel text as back and forth people bicker and ask questions and seek answers with no avail. And then finally again, Jesus reappears with the promise of hope and healing and sight. And yet in the midst of it all, the blind man is aware of what is happening, that something is changing, even though he cannot completely explain it. I think we find ourselves in the world right now, in the middle of this gospel text. We find ourselves wondering, where is God in all of this? How can this all be happening? How can our whole world be living in fear and uncertainty as a pandemic grips everything in our lives? As we watch confirmed case numbers rise exponentially and the death toll mount, and entire communities being shut off from one another. And we find ourselves like those in this story with so much uncertainty, with clarity that might even be worse than mud, asking questions, longing for some sort of hope. Questions I've heard this week like, is my loved one going to be all right? Am I going to be working at the end of this week? How are we going to afford to be able to keep going? How am I as a medical professional going to be able to walk into a room if I don't have the necessary protective equipment? How are we going to continue to worship? How is God going to be present in the midst of all of this? And with every question that I and Pastor Lori have been asked this week, we have had to admit that we do not know all the answers and that the uncertainty that we face as individuals, as congregation, as community is not clear at all. It's clear as mud. Yet in the midst of that, we are reminded that this story isn't over. And that while Jesus might be out for that scene in the middle, Jesus never leaves. And when he hears what's happened to the blind man, when he hears how his community has treated him, he returns and gives the blind man a promise of grace and truth and love that cannot be found in this world, that can only come from Jesus Christ. And so as we absorb the words of this day and this we long for clarity in our lives as we find things as clear as mud. We're reminded what Jesus instructs this young man to do. To fully wash and be aware of what God is doing. And to find sight restored not in the questions of the world around us, but to find our sight and trust in God. To seek the light amidst the darkness and to long to find God in a God's grace in ways we might not yet have imagined. As many times as I've been asked difficult questions this week, I've also found great opportunity to see how God's people and community are working to bring grace and hope in ways beyond expectation, in ways that we would have never thought possible just a few weeks ago of ways that the community is sharing resources with one another, of ways that children are being cared for so that their parents can go work double shifts at the hospitals and grocery stores 
and all of those providing essential services in this time. Of the ways that people are reaching out and sharing God's love with those who feel trapped and confined. Of the ways that light is being brought into the world when it often seems so dark. In our text from Ephesians this week, we hear a story of a new community, of one that is drawn together from Jews and Gentiles alike. And the author who is writing in the tradition of Paul is trying to help them understand that this is a work in progress. This is an effort we share in together. That Christian community doesn't just fall into our laps, rather it is something that we seek, it is something that we long for, it is something that we try each day to bring together. And in the 10th verse of that Ephesians text this day, we hear, try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Try. Don't we know? That word, try to, comes from the Greek word, dikimizontis, which really is something deeper than just making an effort or trying. Rather, it is rooted in the word to discern to prayerfully consider how God is at work. In this Lenten season, in all that we have had to give up, in all that we find unclear, now we are encouraged in the light to discern, to ponder in prayer and in our hearts what God is calling of us. To live a Christian life to be an agent of grace, to represent Christ in the world right now is probably going to be harder than it usually is because the ways that we have made our offerings in the past, the ways that we have shared God's love aren't often possible right now. So the Holy Spirit will be at work in us, drawing us out to find new ways to encourage and care and sustain one another when anxiety and fear and uncertainty seem to be getting the best of us. The time to be in Christian community is now. At a time where we can't draw together in community, we are brought together in this discernment, this effort that we make to present God's love and light to the world around us. It doesn't have to be all at once. It doesn't have to be broad strokes. If Jesus can do amazing things with mud, what can you do with what God has placed around you? And if you're at that point where all of the questions that you asked this week, where all of the fears that lay on your heart, where all of the uncertainty has you in a place of gloom, be not afraid. Open your heart. Make that effort to reach out to someone else, to long for someone to walk with you, to go to the pool and to wash your face, and to know that we are sent to see God's love. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come. It's grace that's brought us safe thus far, and grace will lead us home. As the small group of individuals who've gathered together to share their voices in song for our whole community during this time apart, the words of amazing grace hold true for all of us, that no matter what we face, no matter what we are burdened by, no matter how big this pandemic becomes, God's grace is something greater. And even if we feel like we're at that time in the middle of this gospel text where all we hear is questions and uncertainty, we know that the end of story turns us right back to Jesus, right back to the cross, right back to the promise made known to us in the font, that promise that will sustain us until we can come again together in the feast that promise that will guide us when we are unable to be in God's love, but to know that God is at work and that God's grace surpasses anything that we might encounter. 
even if things are as clear as mud. We are promised, we are certain, that God will wipe away that mud and that we will see fully and that we will know. Grace will lead us home. Thanks be to God. Amen. Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need.
holy and almighty God, in these times of restraint and physical distancing, when the body of Christ cannot meet in one place, we gather through the Holy Spirit in our many different places, and we call out to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give courage and wisdom to national governments and local authorities to enforce public health regulations for the welfare of all and increase efforts to stop the spread of the virus that affects every human being. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Breathe a spirit of love and self-discipline into your church that it continually promote and protect regulations and restrictions for the well-being of all. Strengthen our witness to embody examples of compassionate self-restraint. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Gracious God, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Heal the sick, strengthen the elderly and the vulnerable. Protect all from the spread of COVID-19. Comfort and uplift those who are alone, isolated, oppressed by solitude and anxiety. Today we lift up Marlo Rohde, Barbara Wise, Nancy and Lathan Friday, the Yarborough family, Hazel Dubel, Rondi Lildahl, Bill Thompson, Bob Milner, John Hall Sr., Kathy Olson, Diane Granoyer, Milo Olson, Lisa Holland Teeter, Violet Fowler, Annette Conningsworther, Piper Haywood, Kim Weeders, Wayne Cartwright, and all those we lift up on our lips and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Support and provide for those who put themselves at risk for our sake. We remember all health care workers public safety workers, and others who provide essential services. May they know your protection and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give patience and courage to those who are out of work. Provide for them in practical and tangible ways. Help us to support one another so that personal and communal suffering is not made worse. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Fill us with trust in your grace that frees us and binds us together in communion in the one body of your Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. God of life and light, you claim us as your children forever. We give thanks for those who have gone before us in the faith, serving as witnesses to your presence. We remember Ron Rao, Manfred Nolte, Jane Maxey, Robert Whitker, Jim Black, Isaac Friday, Sterling Yarborough, Jennifer Diener, Randy Hazlip, Colin Pitcarin, Quady Hawk, George Lippard, Rudy Biddle, Janet Foreman, Jean Hill, Richard Teeny Chapel. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Trusting in your great compassion and unconditional promise to always be with us, we pray. Amen. Wherever you are, 
The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need. Awaken us to the needs of others. And at the end, bring all the world to your feast through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with mercy and give you peace.